Welcome into NFM TV. I'm your host, Greg Scher. Interesting times remain in the mortgage and real estate business. We thought we'd check in with a top realtor. Joining us now is Ken Abramowitz from the Ken Abramowitz Group of Remax Town Center. He's got two offices in the state of Maryland, a 10-year real estate veteran. Ken, thanks for being with us on NFM TV. You're very welcome, Greg. I appreciate you having me on. All right. So let's bust a couple of myths. Real estate is not selling during the pandemic. That is 100% false. We started out the year in a, in a situation where the inventory was lower than normal, and that's just been amplified. So, you know, for example, I can tell you that where I am in my particular neighborhood, normally we see at this point anywhere 150, 200 homes on the market, there's under 20. So because there's a lack of inventory, but the rates are still good and people still need a place to live, you know, food, clothing, shelter, um, markets as active as it's ever been. Could some of that be fear, though? People feeling like, well, if I put my home on the market, who's going to want it at this point? People are in such disarray in, in some parts of the country. Yes, that's that's 100% correct. And we have a fair share of our clients that have decided to wait it out. Uh, we actually have run into a couple of situations where um, we had a home, we wrote a contract on it, and we were on the buyer end of it. We were about to ratify, and then the, the seller freaked out because she didn't want the inspector and the appraiser to come through and took her home off the market. So we are seeing things like that, absolutely. So tell us what some of the exceptions are that have been made uh, by the state that you're in to be able to continue to be an essential worker, to be able to show homes if that's what the client wants. Are there restrictions around that? Yes, there are. So um, Governor Hogan of Maryland has been one of the most outspoken leading guys in the country. I believe he's the head of all the governor's association, whatever that is. So he's been, he has gotten way ahead of this thing more so than a lot of others. So what he ruled was that number one, um, we're actually considered essential real estate agents are essential. He, the rule for showings is that no more than three people in the home at the same time, um, including the agent, we are allowed to do showings. Um, we have, uh, protocols that we have to go through. We have uh, we advise everybody and we put this in the showing instructions and the MLS comments to the agents. You know, you have hand sanitizer, gloves, wash your hands. If you, uh, we have the questionnaire, you know, if you've been coughing, if you have a fever, all the CDC. So um, everybody is fully aware and just given that little more, here's the things that you got to jump through. But in Maryland, we're good to go. We just have to go within these uh, uh, guidelines and also no more overlapping showings. It used to be for sellers, at least, multiple agents in at the same time was beautiful because that normally led to a feeding frenzy and multiple offers. Now, it's, that's it. One group per hour. So those are the, the things that we are getting used to here on our Yeah, and I think it's like that all across the country yeah. where, where we do business. I'm wondering from your uh, perspective if technology has advanced enough to handle these times. Virtual showings. Uh, are people, do you find that your clients are willing to purchase? Is there enough data and enough visual evidence to have somebody commit to a transaction of that magnitude without ever walking inside the home? Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Uh, the answer is yes. And I'm going to tell you, I just had two experiences like that. Uh, one, we were, um, a buyer called me up last week, saw a place, wanted to go in there, uh, loved it, wanted, we wanted to go take a look. So I called the agent. He said, the sellers are in their 70s. They don't want anybody coming in the house. Um, Write the offer first, and he had a virtual tour. The video was spectacular. He did a great job. Um, write the offer, if he, and I'll give you a verbal okay, and if it looks good to them, we'll let you in the house. And that's what he did. He insisted on walking my buyers through. And after we were done, um, buyer said, we're good to go, and that was it. We ratified. Um, that was a, there was another one where we were on the buyer end. We were one of three offers on this house, and the people that bought it, we lost out because it was a rent-back situation we couldn't do. But the buyer that got it, Never saw the home, video only, the agent never walked in, no contingency to walk away when they see the home. Um, so yes, I, and, and again, it was a video walkthrough where they, in this particular one, the agent did a virtual open house where they, somebody was holding a camera and she just walked through and described every room. So between the virtual showing, um, which we can connect a Zoom link and put that on the, um, uh, on the MLS and these virtual open houses, and our MLS has now allowed us to post a virtual open house, just like a normal open house, except you indicate virtual. Yes, people are buying based on that sight unseen. We are seeing it. So what about when it comes to home inspections, which is normally the linchpin to uh, 
consummating the transaction. Are people, are you finding people more willing to buy the house as is, or is there still that factor involved? I think people are willing to do uh, as is, and I think it all depends on the situation. So I, at this point, I think everybody's sort of used to the normal, which is um, we're going to be in a competitive situation, at least where I am, no matter what. And there's other areas, you know, California, Seattle, you know, there's areas that are like the same way. So they're used to that. They know that. So if we're in a competing situation, we're pretty much going to take the home as is, unless it's like an older home and they're worried about it. Um, so they are doing home inspections still. The change is that the home inspectors, for the most part, I know ours are doing this, they don't want anybody in the house, including buyers, during the inspection. So what my inspector's doing is as he goes through the house and as he finds things, he sends us a video snippet of it. And he goes, this is what I found. And, and so he does that. And he'll also go, hey, great news, guys. Like we just did one earlier this week. He's standing on the roof. Guys, great news. 30-year architectural shingle. It's brand new. So he, that's how he's doing the inspection. Now, as an agent, I'm like, man, I hope that sticks around uh, after this is over because I'm getting a little spoiled here by the technology, yeah. <laughs> you know, not sitting there for three hours just walking through a house. But um, that's, that's sort of the way it's going right now. These, these inspections are even virtual. So based on what you're seeing, based on the climate out there, what advice do you have to people that are on the fence as to whether this is a good time to uh, list their home? I think this is an unbelievable time to list the property because we have that market that everybody is sort of the dream market, no inventory, tons of buyers out there. Why? The rates are still unbelievable. We had a guy pre-approved at three and a quarter last week. The rates are actually with Kevin. Um, the rates are great. Uh, there's even lower, lower inventory than there was at the beginning of the year. We've had an inventory issue for the last probably two years. So it's supply and demand. There's very little supply and a ton of demand. I don't know that there's a better market than this for sellers. I mean, homes are just you know, flying off the shelf if they're priced right relative to their condition. It's an amazing market right now. So I had mentioned that you've been a real estate agent for over 10 years. Prior to that, I understand you were in the medical profession. So uh, what did you do? And did that prepare you in some way for what for the psychology of what's going on right now, given that it is a, a medical issue that's created all, yeah. all, all of the hysteria? Yes. Uh, it's very interesting how that worked out. And um, you know, I, I own several medical offices and we were dealing with, um, you know, and I'll just tell you what we were doing. It was a very boutique practice. All we, we did one procedure. It was non-surgical hemorrhoid treatment. And you want to talk about a problem that everybody has, but nobody wants to talk about. And you have to be very sensitive and be able to, you know, use the psychology to try to comfort people that everything's going to be okay. And we're, we're sort of in that same here. So how that transfers to the, um, to the real estate side is number one, that one-on-one, -on -one, we're sort of going to this like almost doctor-patient relationship now where we really have to, um, it's very emotional and you have to just be patient with people, understand their point of view, that all they're thinking about is what's in their head and what's in my head is not important. I just have to just kind of calm their fears and tell them everything's going to be okay. So from that part of it, for this situation, it's great. And the other part, just overall, um, because I was more on the, I was also at multiple offices and being able to be on that business side of things, I, you know, I was, I used to negotiate both deals and marketing and sales. And this was a very hard thing to get people to do. And I would sometimes joke if I had the right seller, I would say, listen, if I could get somebody to call an 800 number and let a complete stranger that they don't know a doctor do that procedure, I think I could sell your house, you know, so kind of joking that way. But that's how it kind of prepared me. It was very similar as to, um, it's a very emotional process and it did help me out for that. Well, we really appreciate your insights uh, during this uh, challenging times in a lot of aspects, but also an opportune time as far as you're concerned in the real estate market. Ken Abramowitz from the Ken Abramowitz Group of Remax Town Center. We really appreciate your time and for being with us on NFM TV. Sure thing. Sure thing. All right, Thank you. Talk to you again soon.